Hi, I'm Rob, and I'm here at the Crimson Moon with Ollie McNeil. Ollie does an awful lot of really interesting live role playing and RPG stuff, and we're about to have a chat with him about that. Hi, Ollie. Hello. I see you've brought some friends with you, and we'll definitely get to talking about these in a minute. But first, Let's start chatting about the, the live role-playing group you're, set, you're setting up, or you've set up and are starting to build. We, we have set up, actually. We've been running for a year, and yeah. we're in Pembrokeshire, okay. uh, which is on the, the south westy part, as far as you can possibly go, in Wales. Um, yep. Beautiful area, and I've got an, an awesome location that we use called Hilton Court, which has a three-storey wizard's tower. It's got a stone circle. It's got um, several... <laughs> buildings that we have a tavern yeah. um, and it's a remarkable opportunity now the interesting thing is there's not many LARPers here mm. so I'm developing a LARP group uh, from people who have never done it before right which is an interesting challenge it but is it, but it's working well okay so we like to sort of tell people a little bit how you're introducing people in and how, uh, how your events are, uh, what, events are running. Yeah, I mean, uh, very briefly what, what I did before this, um, live role playing got me into theatre and I've always wanted to try and bring uh, live role playing to the masses, to the general populace um, and break down any barriers which might originally stop them. Mm -hmm. So uh, previously I had a theatre in Rye Mm -hmm. which was uh, a live action one, but you come down the steps and go into a story uh, without having costume or character. And that was my kind of introduction to yeah. it. That's how I got, I got people interested. Um, we had COVID, obviously, and then, then that had to close down and I moved over here. Now I'm bringing it back up. Um, we've got the, the live shows which kind of bring people in and the storytelling role-playing game that I do, which again brings people in. Uh, and now... I have the LARPing groups, which, again, it's very accessible, very easy to play. Um, so they can come along initially with a very basic costume. Uh, they don't have to have armor or weapons initially or things like that. Um, and, you know, we're slowly getting people who've done uh, just role playing, people who do uh, computer role playing, mm -hmm. um, people who like uh, just acting or people who are just interested in cosplay starting to get into live role playing from the mm. easy sort of method the, that we're The easy route, because the old fashioned tradition with those tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons, but now you're finding cosplayers and PC, um, computer players yeah. coming across, which is there, there's, it's a nice widening. <laughs> there's a huge curiosity and a huge pool of people who are curious. Yeah. But if you look uh, from the outside uh, as a, someone who's never done it before, mm -hmm. it can be quite intimidating yeah. to suddenly jump into it, uh, especially if there's no other groups that anyone's tried before in the county. Oh, no. um, or the other two counties, apart from here, are wonderful, but I didn't maybe do too much role, live role play. It's a very small, little, little, little occasional event. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm trying to get um, a, a regular events going, and we, we introduced it last year um, to families. Okay. Um, just to test it out, we had junior groups with parents playing, and then this year we we've got an adult group, um, mm -hmm. which is teenagers to adult uh, who are playing, and from that we we've just seen some incredible players just fall in love with it. You see a spark light up in their eyes. You suddenly yeah. see their post going and go, I've made a mask, I've made a costume, I've made a weapon, I'm working on this. You go, whoa, 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 slow down. No, no, no actually carry on. Carry no, yeah, actually, just, so, just go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's outstanding. Yeah, it, it's very exciting, and it, it's interesting to have pretty much all your player group as newbies. You know. Oh wow! Yeah, they're all at an equal level, yeah. all ex learning and experiencing, and having those little light bulb moments all at the same, all it, the same it, time. It, it is. They're, they're all they're all new, all different levels, um, but they're all sort of benefiting from it and bouncing off each other. So you, mm -hmm. when you're at that stage, you, there's a little bit of um, you know you have to lead by example, yeah. and hopefully if we can get it right yeah. um we can create something quite unique in the larping community yeah no um, that does sound and it sounds wonderful actually yeah. and this sound good i didn't I, I mentioned these earlier do you want to explain to people what we've actually got here well you might recognize this one now i, I, I do as, actually uh, yes w w one of the things that we do um th that got people into role playing and um, was our of interactive shows. Yeah. And um, this is made by Mark Cordry, who is. Definitely Mark's puppet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. This is, uh, we call him Sebastian. I think his Scabies is. Scabies was the original his, name. His he's twin been... brother. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's fantastic. And we've also got um, 
various other uh, props made by Mark, right. uh, and these are some that I've made myself. So yeah. we've got um, a couple of good masks here. Yeah, uh, they, we've got a, a shadow goblin, and we've got uh, a, a fey uh, king uh, yeah. that we uh, made this one a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah. my, my background. You know, after doing a lot of LARPing when I was about 14 to uh, 20 was going to work in theatre as a prop maker uh -huh. and scenic artist. And that's, that's where I come from within my shows, is that I want um, people to have a very, hopefully a very interesting role-playing experience. Yeah. Um, the emphasis is not on rules and it's not on battles. It's on yeah. characterization and storytelling. So we're not pushing people straight into battles, or we're not looking at complex, big rule tomes. We're looking at no. doing a lot more conversation, a lot more accessible and fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, hopefully it's all fun. All but, fun, but, yeah. But, but, but battles are fun, but yeah. it's just taking a slightly different angle on it. It is, and we that is a lot easier again for people because they, they can be quite intimidated. They look at some of these battles; they're going to go, "I don't yeah. really want to throw myself into that." Yeah. Um, but they do enjoy. Uh, fantasy novels and they do enjoy role playing and they do yeah. enjoy storytelling so you can bring them in there and then if they do want to navigate towards fighting there is that functionality there for them as well yeah um, that's very good and we've talked about this but i know you've also got a, li a line of books and games you've published yeah. Do you just want to quickly just mention those to let people know what you're fully about? Yeah, okay. If you look under the, the Story Master's Tales, um, yeah. I, I started doing that as the stage show. Yeah. Um, it was in a parlour theatre show that we used to do uh, and still do. And then from that, I, I, I wanted to reach more people. So I developed that into a game. Yeah. Um, first one was The Wheeling Woods. Um, then we launched that as a Kickstarter and that mm -hmm. funded very well. Uh, and then I had Drac of Deep Dungeon. This is all set in the same threat or world, which is the same as the, the live action role playing um, group, which is called Folklore Realms. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had uh, all the narrations put in there and soundscape. So I wanted the, the theatre side to come through in the game books. Yeah. Um, and now we utilise those game books as part of the source material that we use for the actual ah. LARPing uh, system. And uh, I'm just going to throw a name drop in here as well. Go for it. When we had to close down the, uh, the, the, the theatre during COVID times, um, we had to transform everything into um, uh, uh, online versions, yeah. uh, which we won twice by the online laugh of the year. You um, did, yeah. But we got Tom Baker, um, who I was uh, a portrait photographer for, for 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, to be the voice of the show. So yeah. not only have we got the Mark Cordry link with Doctor Who, we've got the Doctor You've himself. You've got the Doctor himself. Yeah. yeah. So that was an amazing coup. So we, we use that in our live shows where yeah. we, we do a big show, we do a smaller yeah. show, and we use the Tom Baker thing for that. Uh, and then that draws our pool of new players to the, the LARPing site. Ah, that's outstanding. And please, yeah, Tom, name drop Tom Baker as much as you want yeah. around, <laughs> here, around here. That's, that's all incredible, Ollie. I think there's one more thing I've got to ask before we finish up, and that's... Mm. How can people find you? How, how can they find you Find you online so they, they can get in touch? Okay, if you are curious to what we do, you can either find us on our, folk, um, our Folklore Realms Facebook page. Yep. Um, just look for Folklore Realms, it'll be Story Master Tales and lots of pictures of Fae. Uh, and it's set in a sort of 18th century world, so again, it's slightly different. Yep. Uh, and you have the, the Fae Realm and the Shadow Realm, and mm -hmm. it's very easy to play, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of storytelling uh, involved there. Uh, or you can find me on my website, yeah. uh, which is www.storymasterstales.com. Okay. Um, and we are also hoping to kind of put Pembrokeshire on the map as a LARPing site, a, a place that we have castles, we have um, incredible coastlines, yeah. we have in old manor houses, mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, the locations that we use. So yeah. we want to do horror ones, we want to do uh, Cthulhu-style adventures, yeah. uh, pirate-style adventures, uh, and of course our, our folklore realm one. Oh, so. That's fantastic. And for anybody who's watching, the, the links to, to, to those sites, they'll be, they'll be in the description. So I think that's all for now, Ollie. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming in. My pleasure. And for, uh, for doing, doing this with us, and all the very best we're trying to do. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, if you're watching this, don't forget to sort of like the video or subscribe to it as well. That really helps out. Thank you all very much.